guys, I'm Neil and welcome to my channel. If you have friends and or family members who love classical guitar or you think that will need the information I share here, please do recommend my channel and I'll really appreciate that. For today's video, I thought that it might be interesting if I can share with you guys how I actually study and digest pieces that I learn. And who knows, maybe you'll be able to pick a few techniques here and there from my video. Since my main purpose of this is to help students in Philippine conservatories, I will break it down for you guys in a manner where you will be prepared to show this to your professor. So this will serve as a little guide when you start learning the piece. So I will just deal with more of your accuracy and the basic fundamentals or objective of the piece that we will tackle. And um, interpretation and everything past that will be up to your professor and you to work on. So again, this is just like um, your basic empty canvas and then you paint the picture in your lesson with your professor. The piece that we will tackle today is an etude by Maestro Leo Brouwer. He's a Cuban composer and very famous and prominent in the classical guitar world. I actually did an Instagram poll. I posted two etudes and I wanted to know which um, etude first should I do. And luckily this etude won, and it's by Leo Brown. So the etude that I'm talking about is etude number one. So let's start. So the first thing that I would like to point out in this piece is the tempo marking. So if you guys can see in the PDF that I'll share right here, it states a descriptive type of tempo, unlike your usual numeric tempo for maybe classical pieces. For this piece, it says movido. And I've been doing a little research about what exactly movido means. So I tried to translate it literally and it barely makes sense to me. So I tried to dig deeper. Luckily, I found this one. He tried to take it from a phrase called baile movido, which means lively dance. So if we remove baile, which is dance, you get lively. I mean, so. I've played this at you before and I think it matches. So we'll take lively. Next point that I want to make is he reiterated in that forum that um, a Brazilian friend of his begged to disagree. And the Brazilian guy shared his personal description of movido. And he regards it as with feelings or emotions. Which again, still makes sense to me. Overall, from what I've found, I think I'll take both. Lively and with emotions and feelings. So that's number one, the tempo marking. Now we move forward to the second thing I want to point out. If you guys observe in bar number one, there's mezzo forte, the MF symbol. And right beneath it, it says cantado el bajo, which if you translate, tells you to make the basses sing. I treat this detail as one, if not the most important detail in the piece that will help me in my music direction. So again, cantado el bajo. The next thing I would want to point out are the dynamics of the piece, which are very evident that in the first line, you get two quite far contrasting dynamics. You get a mezzo forte in the beginning, followed by a pianissimo towards the latter part of the system. We're gonna call this short phrase X1. That's with the first theme in mezzo forte. The next small phrase is a reiteration of that same line, but on a different dynamic level, pianissimo. So we're gonna call that X2. So in X2, you get a slight change, which is the Do sharp here in the bass, okay? I'll play X2 again. Okay, with your pinky, Do sharp. So X1, mezzo forte. Okay, so this is one of the ways I thought that will help you practice your hearing. So you need to set your ear that in this part, you need this dynamic level and approaching that part, another part will be lower or softer. So um, try this out. Again. So 
So I know you guys can do better than that. Um, I started reviewing this piece like three days ago. So the more you practice this, then you can really sound way better than that. So now that we've discussed x1 and x2, now we go to the other presented phrase, which is... We're gonna call Y1 with forte Y1. And then another reiteration at piano. So forte and then just piano. So again, I'll use the same method in practicing. Again, the more you practice it, the more consistent you will be able to do it. Now we approach what I want to call the B part, okay? So X1, X2, Y1, Y2, I'll call it the A part. We move to the B part. Now try to relax the tensions you built in um, this bit because I want to highlight texture for this part. The first part, it's Cantado el Bajo. Comes B part where there are, I think, two characters presented, chords. Answering bass. Again, chords. Imagine you're in a choir and let's say the tenor and the basses are singing in unison while the sopranos and the altos are in harmony. Now, the more you overlap this part, I think the more effective the texture will be. Listening is very important, so don't overpower where you can barely hear the bass, or don't overplay the chords and you overplay the bass. That's not pleasant. The bottom line is you get a nice sound. I'll try it and then you guys can check. Maybe if I'm not able to do it, at least you guys have the concept in mind. Okay, so I'll try my best. It goes. Then again with your profound basses here. Comes this part, which I think is the climax of the piece. So in this part, there is an extreme description on how you should play it. So you were given three things. You're given fortissimo, which is very loud in English. Second is you're given marcato, marked, heavy. And then you're also given the accent symbols. So try your best to make this heavy, loud, and accented. So for me, I'd like to prepare it since you're approaching from here. So it's not a matter of like pushing your guitar to a louder volume, it's setting the ears of the audience to a softer level so that you'll have the illusion that when you punch that fortissimo, even though it's, let's pretend it's the same volume as forte, it will still sound louder because you came from a really mellow and soft dynamic level. Also, aside from pushing the volume, marcato. So I'd like to imagine an elephant. When I'm shown a picture of an elephant, I know for a fact that it's heavy. But if I actually see a video of a walking elephant like in the field, then I can feel how heavy the elephant is. Not only do I know it's heavy, I can feel the weight. How? Because I can see it's humongous. It's built like a tank. And also, um, aside from it being so bulky, I can see how slow and heavy the steps are, which I can use as imagination for the marcato. So I'll try to push the, the volume, okay. So I'll stretch the tempo a little bit to give that feeling of weight, like drag the tempo a little bit. 
I think I've made my point enough. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll try it from here. Um, and I know you guys can do better so just giving you like a concept of how to think about this section so now that we've tackled the climax of the piece you are again welcomed by the resurfacing of the first theme uh, if you browse over it, it's somewhat the same so same concept I'll use but the presence of one description uh, surfaces here, which is sonoro. Well, from what I've seen in uh, a little research that I did, in the presence of the sonoro, I also found that one of the descriptions will be um, make it ring or let ring. And in that sense, I'll just try to leave some of the notes um, that are still in harmony ringing together instead of lifting them off to get them muted. I'll try to leave them. Okay, but if it doesn't sound that nice, then I'll lift it up. But I'll try to make it over ringing. Okay, so maybe I'll do it here. It's like a power chord. Yeah. <laughs> so it's somehow like a power chord. Maybe I can let that as part of the sonoro part, just to observe it a little bit. Now, a lot of things here are similar, so I won't really go into detail, but I want to point out the ending, because I find it really, really interesting. So for me, the ending, instead of having a ritardando or poco ritardando, um, Leo Brower actually put here morendo. Super interesting because it means dying. You don't just slow down, okay? You get weaker and weaker, slower and slower. And that for me opens a wide avenue for artists to have a proper internalization of the ending. So for me, this is how I'll digest Etude Number no. 1 by Leo Brower. And um, I hope I was able to point out the basic details of this etude. It's a really fun etude to play and it's super catchy. So it's, I think, worth it to really learn and add to your repertoire. With all that said, I'll try to play Etude Number no. 1. Try. <laughs> So that's it for now guys and I hope you were able to pick some bits and pieces from my interpretation and maybe you can add it to yours. If you guys liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel. Again, if you have friends who you think you'll benefit from the content of this channel, please do share it with them. So that's it for now and I'll see you guys on the next one. See ya!